Hi, thanks for joining. In this video, we're going to go over the company setup screen and all the important components within it. Let's first start by finding the screen. We're going to select Setup from the left-hand menu, and under General Ledger, choose Company Setup. Once the screen loads, you'll notice all of the companies that have been created are located at the top. The bottom houses all of the related information for each company. Here we can do things such as rename the company code, rename the company name. You can use the filter options located on the top column headers to filter out or locate a particular company that you wish to work on. So let's go ahead and do a filter of the company code. We're going to look for um, SB. Actually, let's do company CC. Let's look for construction company. So I can choose to either filter the company code if I know it or just the company name. I can also choose to reduce how many rows I'm looking at. By right clicking on the top grid, I'm going to go ahead and only view three rows. This way I have more real estate on the bottom to take a look at the additional information for this company. So here under the address and contact, we can fill in key pieces of information such as the address or contact information. These are important because they can filter right through to all of the different forms within the company. Now the GL integration is also very important. This is what tells the system where to put key items such as your retained earnings or your net income. If you're using exchange exchange rates or you, you deal with different currencies and you and you plan to record the unrealized or realized gains or losses, you're going to want to make sure under the GL integration that you put in your unrealized or realized gain accounts. The intercompany tab is the next most important item where if you do have intercompany transactions, meaning you're moving money from one company to the other or you're paying expenses on behalf of another company, this is where you get to put in the company that you are going to deal with and also the loan accounts that the company is going to update on your behalf. So here I'm going to the filter and I'm going to select or under my filter and find my company empire. So I'm going to go ahead and put an EM and now I can view two companies at the same time. So when I go into each company, I'm able to see that both companies have been updated for the intercompany loan accounts. The next tab to take a look at is the company logo. Now, if you take the time to update your company logo, that logo will show up on all of the reports within the system and also can filter through to your forms. So if you decide to change your logo one day, you don't have to go through and change all of your forms because it'll be linked back to this one screen. The last tab to look at is the users tab. This is a very convenient way to go ahead and add all of the users that you would like to have access to this company in one place. You can also do this on the user screen under the company tab, but that's more aligned with giving one particular user access to multiple companies, whereas here you can give multiple users access to your one company. One little tip here, you can double click on the name to add or remove it from either column. On this screen, you can also add a brand new company or use our copy from function. We highly, highly recommend using the copy from function because if you add a brand new company from scratch, you actually have to build that company, meaning there are no sub ledgers, there are no tax codes. So it is a lot easier if you use the add from function and copy from an existing company that already has the core components created. So to go ahead and copy a company, all we're going to do is hit the add from button. And here we're going to fill in all of the important information. So what is your company code and your company name? The fiscal year is really important. This cannot be changed. So you want to make sure that you're putting in the right year end. If your fiscal period ends in December, for example, you're going to put in the number 12. Then you're going to go ahead and put in the address. You'll notice that once I put in my city and I try to put in my state or my province, I have no drop downs available. This works very much like Amazon. You need to complete the country before we give you the option of state or province. Then we're going to go ahead and select the company that we're copying from. 
If you don't have an existing company, we provide some default sample companies for you. Those are either labeled as TY or TZ. Please feel free to choose those which have the core components already added for you. And then you can go ahead and select which parts of the company you wish to copy over. We highly recommend you keep that job sub ledger or the job setup, sorry, checked off, but you do have the option of whether or not you would like to copy over the customers, the vendors, the bank setup. At a bare minimum, the sub ledgers will copy over, the chart of accounts will copy over, and your tax codes will copy over. You also have the option to check off 13th period. This is generally used to record your year-end adjusting entries. If you do check this off, please be aware that you cannot uncheck it. And the way this will work is if you have a December 31st year-end, your 12th period will take you to December 30th, and then your 13th period would be December 31st. Once we're done, we're gonna hit okay, and that's essentially gonna create a brand new company. And these are all the things you can get done in the company setup screen. Thanks for watching.